So I wanted to start out and just talk a little bit about myself. I got some of your names and um, some inside jokes now with Megatron in the back. Um, but I wanted to tell a little bit about my story, where I come from, and all that good stuff. I grew up in a tiny town called Buckley. You gotta say it with a big accent, Buckley, because um, it's Hick Town, and everybody says it that way. Country's number one. We just love, we love Hicks, everything like that. Uh, but I grew up in this small town. And uh, everybody was pretty close in it in elementary school, uh, except for little Carl. Little Carl got picked on and made fun of quite a bit for some quirky personality things that I'm sure you'll find out later if we spend some time together. Uh, I'm pretty gullible, as yes, no. Um, but I still loved life, even though I got rejected a lot and I got picked on a lot. Uh, I remember specifically my my first grade year. I was sitting at the lunch table, and I was about to go sit over at all the cool people, and they said, oh, what is Carl doing here? This is a guy's table. Carl, you're a girl. I was like, okay. And I went and sat by the stinky kid that smelled like cigarette smoke. But that was my entire elementary, elementary school life, was just constantly being rejected and stuff. And we're going to come back to that story a little bit later, and uh, I'm going to tell you like, why I am who I am now. Um, but uh, before we do that, I want to talk about another story of rejection. And that starts in the book of Genesis. Lance, I'm just going to jack your sermon. That's not all right. Genesis chapter 3. I'm just kidding. No, but in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, if you don't know what the Bible is, it, there's a funny acronym for it, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. That's good. We can talk yeah. about that later yeah. if you want. Uh, it's yeah. just something funny that Christians talk about. Uh, but the Bible is the Word of God. It's written down, it's surpassed, not surpassed, it's passed through centuries of, of different people writing and scribing and editing and all that good stuff, and it's alive, breathing, and active today. If you want to talk about that later with me, I'd love just to chat about the Bible and what it is to me. Um, but in the beginning of the Bible is this book called Genesis, which is the beginning of creation. And God created this perfect environment for humanity to exist in, perfect in environment where humanity could could have community with creation, could have community with other men, and could have community with God. It says that God actually walked with the man and the woman in the Garden of Eden. That's community. But something happened in the garden. Man disobeyed. Does anybody have a story like, sometime that they disobeyed their mom or their dad? Yes, everybody. So we all understand this disobedience. It's not too far off to understand yeah, obviously man is going to disobey sometime or another. God knew that that disobedience would happen, and he still created man, and he still created creation, because he has a sole desire to have community with us. Right. He desperately loves people. He desperately loves you, he desperately loves me, and he loves everything about us, and he wants to get to know us. So with that in mind, with man, when man disobeyed, there must have been decisive action on the part of God. He is a holy, perfect individual, a holy, perfect person. And there's no way that he, have, he can have that kind of close, intimate community with an imperfect man who disobeyed. So there was action, there was consequence of this sin, if you will. Sin is just another word for disobedience, for missing the mark, for missing perfection. So when we sin, this consequence of sin carries over from the beginning of creation till now. And we feel its consequences every day, just from the hands of the disobedience that you felt. And that, that correlates to the rejection that I talked about in my story in elementary school. That feeling of rejection. Rejection is a common human emotion, a common human experience. Whether you've been rejected by a family member or by, by somebody that you liked. In my life, when I, uh, when I was going through these stages in elementary school, I was in fifth or sixth grade, and I thought, I have got to get on the cool side of this table, and I've got to overcome my nickname of girl. So I knew the only way to do that was to get a girlfriend. So I gathered what a few of my dorky friends that I had, and I said, okay, guys, here's the deal. Carl needs a girlfriend. And they're like, okay, okay, okay. And I said, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go around, and we're going to ask out every girl in this school if they'll go out with Carl. <laughs> so 
They did. They went to every single girl in the school, and I got rejected by every single girl in the school. Uh, even the stinky girl that smelled like cigarette smoke, I was just broken. I was rejected. And it took years, months and years to overcome that feeling and sense of rejection. And we'll come back to that story again. Um, but the implications for sin, Adam and Eve disrupted the unity of community. That's deep. Unity of community. And just like us, rejection, disappointment, is a disruption of the unity of community. Say it with me. Unity of community. That's the heart of God, is this community aspect of life. Which you can see and understand why sin is such a big deal to God. It's a disruption to the community that he wants to develop with his people. So we're going to keep going. Um, we are created in the most perfect place to exist, and sin disrupted that. But that's not the end of the story. Although we're rejected from God because of that sin, because of that, that breakage of community, he had a plan in store. A plan to restore us to that community that he so longed for and so, so desired. And this, this plan is the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Maybe you've heard the name in, in elementary school. Sometimes you hear the word of God or the name of God sometimes before uh, a nasty word. But uh, a lot of us have heard the name of God or the name of Jesus. God created everything and he created this plan where Jesus was going to come to the earth and he was going to restore this community. Jesus Christ is the son of God. He lived a perfect and a sinless life. And because he lived a perfect and sinless life, he was the only one that could restore this, this, bond, this barrier of sin, this barrier of broken community. So he lived this perfect and a sinless life, and he was rejected by humankind. So these feelings of rejection and, and, and disappointment, Jesus felt the most of those, which helps me to relate to him so much. So as he, as he lived this life... He was rejected by, the, by humanity, he was rejected by the world, and he went to the cross to bear, to bear the consequences of my sin. The Bible talks about the message of Jesus. It talks about the cross and everything that he had to endure. It said that he had to endure a crown of thorns to, to mock his kingship. It says that he had to endure three nails that went through every part of his body, his hands and his feet. It said that he had to endure a spear through the side that, that pierced the outside of his heart. It said that he, he had to endure being rejected by the whole world. It said that he had, to, he had to endure being whipped and spit on and whipped with the cat of nine tails, which was a development of the Roman system, which was perfect for almost executing a human. It says it was up to the point that a human could not withstand it. 39 lashes, because if it was 40, then the human would die. He had to endure all this. And I look at Jesus and I say, without, without, without having community restored with God, that would have been my consequence of sin. Right. Because sin will disrupt you from the community that God so longs for. Yeah. So the marks that Jesus would, had to endure. This is my punishment. And... No matter what we try to do to restore this community with God outside of Jesus, it's always going to be worthless, and we're always going to be rejected from God. It says that our righteousness on our own accord, on our own strength, is nothing but worthless, nasty rags in God's sight. Everything that we try to do, we can't just be a good person. We can't just be obedient to people. We can't just go to church. We can't just say that I love you to people. Community being restored must start with accepting Jesus Christ. Yeah. Accepting the free gift of restored community that comes from the gift of Jesus Christ. And something that's really cool about a gift is it's free. Right. Yeah. How many times on your birthday do you hear your mom say, yeah, here you go, but uh, you can start paying that back tomorrow by doing <laughs> dishes, by doing the laundry. It's free. It's free. There, there's no strings attached to it. Right. It's absolutely free. And the cool thing about it is that anybody can come to this idea of the free gift of Jesus. Anybody can walk to the cross. Yeah. Anybody can come to him. So if you're here today 
and you have this sense of rejection or this sense of disappointment, I want to invite you to start thinking about the message of Jesus and who he is to you and how God longs for your community. He longs to be in relationship with you. If we continue talking about Jesus, it says that we can have a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship with Jesus. And for me, like that is such a hard concept to understand. How in the world can I have a personal relationship with somebody who's the creator of the universe, who's transcendent, meaning he's so far beyond me, but at the same time, he's imminent, which means he's right next to me. The Bible goes even more. He says when you accept Jesus, Jesus begins to live inside of you. What does that mean? This word, this word personal, it was so clear to me. I took a class at Northwest University. Sorry, my voice cracking. I took a class at Northwest University. Uh, the word personal means that two individuals are made personal when they start living in community with each other. That one person begins to fill the other person, their, their emotions, their experiences, their feelings. You begin, if you, if you look at two people who are married and you put them together, think of like two eggs being cracked and put into a bowl. You have the yolks that are completely separate, unless you're clumsy like me and you break the yolk. But I don't feel like that happens. So you have two yolks inside of a bowl and all the whites on the outside, they intermingle and they mix together. This is the idea of personal relationship. That there's a mixture, there's, there's a giving and a taking of experience, feelings, and emotions. And the, the idea here is that when we're personal with Jesus, we're giving him something. We're giving him our heart. We're giving him our disappointments. We're giving him our rejection. We're giving him our experiences. In return, we're accepting the freedom, the love, yeah. the acceptance, the, the joy of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We don't have to live in the sense of rejection. So if we go back to my story, after I asked all these girls to go out with me, and I got rejected by every single one of them, it was a year, a year and a half of living on the outskirts of life, living on the outskirts of the cool kids, until finally I was 13 years old, and my brother asked me if I wanted to go to church with him. I'm like, well, Brian, I'm, I'm really, really into my video games, and church is not going to be not going to be cool, so um, I don't think so. But I had a dream that night. I have a dream. <laughs> I had a dream at 13 years old on Saturday. I had a dream that in my, in my dream, um, my family was being tortured in the middle of our street. And I was being held back and I could do nothing about it. Has anybody else had a dream like that? Or something like you're just being held back, you can't do anything to do what you want to do? Or like those slow-mo dreams where you want to move and you just can't? Like Normally it was me trying to fight the bully, I just couldn't do it. But this dream, when I was 13 years old, <clears throat> I was being held back and I couldn't, couldn't help my family. And they're crying out for me, Carl, come save us, come save us, and I couldn't do it. And I woke up right after this figure that was red and horn with horns on his, on his head. He walked in front of my face. It freaked me out. I recognized that figure as Satan. And I woke up. I had that dream again, though. The same moment after Satan walked in front of my face, I woke up. I had that dream for a third time. Satan walked in front of my face, and I woke up. I'm freaking out, like close to wetting the bed, so scared. At 13, I know. <laughs> Again, quirky personality things. Um, so I went up to my parents' room, slept on the floor, and um, I said, God, God, if you are real, if you are, would you take this dream away from me and I'll go to your church in the morning? I understood that there was nothing that I could do in my own personal existence that would take this dream away. And so I came to Jesus. There is nothing that I could do to, to resolve my issue of rejection. So I came to Jesus. And after I said that prayer, my dream, I had that dream again. After Satan walked in front of my face in my dream, I said, God, would you just make this situation better? Would you heal my family? And in that moment, halos appeared over my family's head. They ascended above the trouble. I was released, and I got to go rejoice with my family. I woke up in the morning, and I had the most phenomenal experience at church trying to live up to my bargain with God. I, I had the feeling of acceptance with a community of individuals who loved each other and who accepted and loved me regardless of what they knew about me, regardless of what they thought about me, or, 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 and they didn't even judge me. 
The cool thing when we come to God and we understand that we can't do this thing on our own is that there's a freedom that's released. That's good. Like Lance was talking about earlier. It t it's a huge challenge to say, God, I cannot do this on my own because it's humility. Who wants to say I can't do something? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's a freedom because I can't do this on my own. I don't have to perform anymore. I don't have to try to be cool anymore. I don't have to try to be accepted anymore. It's already given. Yep. It's freedom. So if you want to close your eyes and bow your head, I would like to present to you a question. If you're tired of this feeling of rejection or performance, and you want to start accepting and understanding and living in a personal relationship with Jesus, who longs for community with you, who longs to get to know you, and that you want this sense of freedom, of being accepted by God, the creator of the universe, who knows the most intricate and intimate details of your life, I would just encourage you to raise your hand and start this journey with God. Hands all across. God, I thank you so much for my friends. God, on the journey that's beginning today, where we begin to live with you, we begin to live for you, we begin to lay everything at your feet, everything at the cross, and we say, God, have your way in my life because you are the only thing that's going to bring freedom. You are the only thing that's going to bring acceptance, God. We thank you so much for this, Lord. We ask that you would bless today, God, and let it be fun. In your holy name, amen. Amen. amen.